Do you be? Do you be? 913 Pacific Points, Cabo Enterprises, ITN, and Jack in the Box. This is the link. Good morning. Hey, remember, we're feeding your face every day in October with pizza. Thank you to CPK, Pyology, Pizza Hut, Capriciosa, Papa John's, Sabaro's, Little Caesars, Vitalis, and Crust. And of course, Pepsi for bringing it all together. Every day you win a gift certificate from one of our participating pizza parlors and a 12 pack of Pepsi. So easy. And all these places have great pizzas that we'll talk about uh, throughout the month. I can think of something great about all these participating pizza parlors, partners. 914. Well, we did ask um, the Democrat Party Chair, Sarah Thomas Netty Dog, on. Uh, last week, uh, she did not um, make it, and so we have the Republican Party chair, Juan Carlos Benitez, who did make it uh, this morning. Thank you, Juan, for joining us. Hey, a warm half a day. It's, I, I feel like I've been uh, called in from the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Juan? Yeah, I'm number one substitute player of the, of the week. It's, I'm doing great. Good to hear from you. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, so we, we did ask Sarah on because there was a little bit of a, I don't know if you heard, there was a little bit of a splash that was made last week was, uh, involving a certain non-voting delegate from Guam uh, being asked in a, a Chamber of Commerce forum whether or not he was considering running for a governor of the territory. And he said, um, well, the short answer was seriously considering it. There was a much longer answer. Um do you still have that? I don't know if he still has that. Do you that. still have the Congressman Michael to Nicholas? Is, uh... No, okay. Mm. Anyway, uh, we did have the clip, uh, but it was he basically just teed off on the administration, said, what was it, Bree? A crisis in confidence. Crisis of confidence. Um, he said, we have an execution problem. Um, I mean, I assume he was talking about the administration because he was he was like, I'm not going to mention any names, but let me tell you what about this administration right here. This one, this and this and this. He just went down the line. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, that ruffled some feathers because that same day we had the Leon Guerrero Tenorio campaign. Um, they're really campaigning hard, by the way. Uh, they came out and they said, how dare you campaign in a pandemic? Only we can do that. <laughs> I mean, it was this funny. How much money have they raised already? It's One. like every other week, yeah. and I, it, it's a fundraiser, you know? Well, we don't know how much money they raise because they don't have to file it until 10 days before the primary, I yeah. believe, yeah. Uh, well, well, it's, it, it's, it's interesting because uh, uh, it, it almost looks like you got to wait for the announcement of, of uh, meetings to determine uh, if there are any uh, fundraisers that weekend or not, you know? What'd you make of that, though? I mean, right off the bat, we know they had a fundraiser the same day that the bars opened, uh, was it earlier this year? Um, we know that the governor filed her reelection papers uh, in January of last year. I mean, just mm -hmm. a few months after uh, swearing in. So I think it was really a case of pot kettle black. I don't know what you think. Well, I, I think it's I think the governor feels that the way to win the election here in Guam is going to be by fundraising and scaring any other candidate from running against her. Uh, I think she's wrong about that. I think everybody uh, agrees that uh, unless you own another bank, uh, you're not going to out fundraise her. She can lo loan, loan herself as much money as she won, and she's proven she's willing to do that in the last election. Uh, I think the, ele the election here is going to be on, on, on actually performance and what she's done or not done. Uh, you know, and, and that's where I think St. Nicholas frustration comes from. Uh, we've been able to uh, get us more funds into the island of Guam that have ever been received uh, in, in, in recent history due to the pandemic. And a, a lot of those funds uh, to this day, 18 months later, are still sitting in the coffers of Guam or even worse, uh, undrawn in federal agencies. 
and 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 I heard that there's going to be a, a meeting on the PUA. You know, for example, we got approved one billion dollars got approved for Guam for unemployment. We only drew we drew less than eight hundred million. So you end up having over two hundred million dollars of unspent federal funding that we could have figured. I can guarantee you, Governor Cabo was there. We would have figured a way to go and spend those two hundred million. Um, but it's it's uh, that is being repeated in in federal program after federal program. The other part of it is a lack of criticism of an administration in D.C. that keeps disrespecting the territories, that keeps changing their 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 rhetoric uh, on on what they're willing to do or not do. Uh, and 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 that's concerning. And you you should be hearing voices from the federal legis from the state legislature here, from the governor, along with the congressman on those issues. And we don't hear any of them. And that's frustrating too. Uh, you said about uh, uh, something about our administration disrespecting uh, the island. Can you go into a, a little more detail? Because I I, I want to say that um, you could be talking about a number of things like, uh, well, the restaurant revitalization fund. Um, there's also some other areas, right? Yeah, well, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start by administration that came in and immediately during the campaign, uh, President Biden said that if the uh, so supplemental security case made it to the Supreme Court that he and he were and he was president, he would dismiss the case. Became president, ends up coming up and arguing, oh, it's unconstitutional. You know, we always need to, the, the, uh, the, the, the rule of law is consistent with the Department of Justice. And we have a policy, regardless of our preference, to defend federal statutes. Uh, and that sounds great, except during the Obama administration, the Defense of Marriage Act was considered by the Attorney General to be unconstitutional, so he did not defend it. The marijuana legislation uh, uh, came up, and, and the federal government decided they were not going to enforce it unless there was interstate travel. Then the Dreamer on immigration came up in, and they said that they thought it was un unconstitutionally unfair. They didn't apply that legislation. How is it all of a sudden that when it came to a benefit to the territories, that it's not the same standard by administration where he was the vice president. Then you end up looking at then at the application of different federal programs to us. They came up and did a resolution. I, I, I'm sure you remember uh, Guam uh, came in and did a local legislature did resolution uh, 5636 in support of the Democrats resolution uh, 279 saying that we should eliminate the insular cases that were horrid, they shouldn't be used. And here you have the new one one billion one trillion dollar package and the three point five trillion to, to, uh, dollar package of funding for the territories, and again, where every state gets two percent or one percent territories. Oh, you get a quarter of a percent, and you need to split it between you you four territories. You know, it's it's not right. And, and you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna shout that you're no longer discriminating against the territories, that you're going to treat us different and equal, then do it. And when they don't, they should be called out by the same Democrats here in this legislature that did that resolution. They should be called out by this governor, and they're not. Um, lastly, you mentioned the Restaurant Relief Fund. The Restaurant Relief Fund gave $72 billion in benefits across the United States, and Guam only got $15 million on it. And uh, I ended up looking and then doing the math. And the, la the, the five states that got the least percentage of the funding they requested were the five territories. In order, American Samoa, Northern Mariana Islands, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. The, the most the territory got was 16.5%. No, no state got more than 20, no state got less than 27%, all the way to 52% of what they requested in funding. For example, Hawaii alone, uh, were, uh, Hawaii alone got $414 million in benefits uh, to 42% of their requests. Massachusetts got $992 million of what they requested. And, and I'm not going to even go, you know, you go into New York. Uh, three billion dollars, thirty-eight percent of what they requested. California, you you go state by state, forty-three percent of the requests, five point seven billion dollars in assets, and we're given fourteen percent 
every single territory is treated in a discriminatory manner and you won't hear a word from this legislature you will not hear a word from this governor to criticize this administration for that this mistreatment and going against their own rhetoric it is their rhetoric we're not going to discriminate against you anymore but where is it where's the beef <laughs> Uh, yeah. Can we just get a reaction about uh, Will Castro being the new uh, chief of staff to Governor Tory? <laughs> I, I know, I know, Juan, you you just did a deep dive into a whole bunch of national stuff, and I, I got some party people on the other side WhatsApp me. But hey, you want to debate him? Come on with him. Come on. <laughs> uh, but let's I'll just. I'll, I'll come. I'll talk to anybody you want me to talk. I'm, 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 I'm not shy. I know you're not. Uh, and 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 to to the. It cannot be done alone. Alone, you cannot have just the congressman presenting and, and arguing these issues and not having any support from the local state matters. It doesn't work that way. It needs to be a concerted voice. Right. Totally. Uh, yeah. Now, with, with Will Castro, uh, exciting news, interesting. You know, it's, uh, Will's one of Will's Castro's north has always been the uh, uniting the Marianas, right? And one Chamorro Nation, one Marianas. Uh, we're the same people. We should try to figure a way we can work together. Uh, what better example of this uh, this uh, cross territorial commitment or Mariana's commitment that being now the chief of staff to the governor of the Northern Mariana Islands? I think it's great. He has roots in the Northern Mariana Islands, so it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, I think he's going to do a great job. Do you um, have you heard though whether or not he's going to run for senator here? Well, my, my hope is he he would run for senator here in Guam. Uh, I have not talked to him since he accepted this position, uh, except for saying congratulations and getting a quick response. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to him. He'll have to make a, 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 a tough choice. Uh, the elections in North American Islands are now the same time as Guam. Mm. Yeah. So uh, it, it's sort of hard to leave the, the governor stranded without a chief of staff right at the end of the primary process into the general election. Right. And then uh, I, I wonder, too, how Guam voters would feel about um, him, you know, working over there and then jumping over here to run for senator real quick for a, in a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Juan, well, you mentioned something interesting. You were hoping he's going to run for senator. Where are we with uh, the Republican um, mission to take back the majority in the we're, Guam we're, legislature? We're, rec we're recruiting. We're recruiting, continue to recruit. And in fact, I've heard a rumor that there's two news anchors that are debating about running for the legislature. And, uh, and uh, I wanted to remind them that, you know, the Republican Party is a big tent party, you know, it's, uh, but, but, but it's, it's, uh, we, we're, we're excited about the prospect. I think we have a, definitely a really good shot at, uh, at winning back the, the legislature. Uh, the one downside is uh, Will Castro is was almost like a sure win if he ran for for office. Uh, so if he decides not to run, it, it's we're going to need somebody else. But but he's not the only one we're looking. We have a, we have, I think we're going to have at least fifteen candidates, if not more, uh, wow. running for the for the for uh, the legislature. And and I'm hoping that uh, that uh, we can make sure that we don't have a really contested primary. Right. That we're able to just just make sure we agree on the candidates that are running. What, are, are you able to share a little bit more about the, the strategy? Because um, I know that uh, in the last election, you guys brought out some of the old guard, right? With Senator mm -hmm. Joanne Brown, Senator Frank Blas mm -hmm. Jr. And it, I mean, I want to say it really paid off because uh, we had dealt with for a couple terms, a bunch of newbies. And then there's also just this um, issue with a lot of the Democrat uh, senators just really turning a blind eye to a lot of things that are happening in the administration just for, you know, because of purely par partisan politics. Right. And so is that going to be kind of first question, who are you guys looking at running? Uh, second, um, is that going to be one of the messaging points that you guys have is like, Hey, we're going to hold this lady accountable. Well, I, th I think one of our roles have always been, there's a need for check and balances. And if anything can prove that more has been this last legislature. It, when when you don't have a legislature that can counter uh, an Adalu, uh, it, it, it is, it's been problematic, at least at this point, unless you have a really a strong voice in Adalu that knows the direction they want to go for it and have a, a really concerted strategy. Right now, what we have is that, that's our problem, is, is there no direction? Uh, and and uh, I, I call it COVID paralysis. Uh, every
everything is COVID and we forget, well, we have an economy, we have other needs that need to be addressed and 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 uh, and, and those we, we can't stop and just keep waiting. Uh, with, with that, it's gonna be a, a, a mix. We're looking at, at some former senators that are looking at running, uh, coming back to the legislature and running again. Yes, we did very good with those last time. Uh, but we're, we're also trying to bring uh, some uh, young blood into the party and, and try to bring some young candidates to, to show the diversity of the party and also represent a, a wider audience and a wider voice for Guam. I think the um, youth in Guam has proven in the last two years their willingness to be activists and to really campaign and participate, particularly in social media. Um, and we we want to try to transfer that into into the general election. So having a couple of those candidates come out and participate would 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 be great. Well, I think we're all excited about uh, this coming election. Oh man, I'm so excited, Bree. I'm like so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. Don't you know, really contain uh, yourself. Here. I know. No, I'm just so <laughs> excited though. So um, what about the uh, gubernatorial race? Yeah, uh, I I think we have three <laughs> potential teams running. Three. Uh, Come wow. on now. No, oh, you don't. Three potential. Teams. Get out of here. And uh, where's and, that and polygraph, have, Jason? Hey, I I'll take it. But but the uh, but those things, you know, you never know if you can trust them. But the 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 uh, I would tell you the we have we have three three potential teams that are looking at expo uh, are exploring right now whether they're gonna they're gonna run or not. I think the unpopularity of Governor Ludon Guerrero in during the last few months and her handling of issues here in Guam uh, has sort of gotten more people interested at seriously looking at it. That's I think is why you get San Nicolas coming out and actually also exploring the possibility. Um, so we we'll see we'll see how it goes. I don't announce other people's campaign. I can tell you that I can announce that I, I'm not running for governor. Uh, so uh, that that I can, it can be put officially to rest. Uh, but the the there is excitement and an interest in in, in bringing a new direction or a new voice into Adelope than what we've had for the last uh, a couple of years. And what about uh, Washington delegate? No, that that's interesting. If if San Nicolas ends up running for uh, governorship and in a primary against Lula and Guerrero. The, the main two questions become, uh, does that prevent him to also run for Congress or not in case he loses the primary? Uh, I would assume it would, but you never know. And, and I have to admit, my, I haven't uh, dwelled into it too much. Uh, but a, a number of, of individuals have already expressed their interest that if he's not running, they would be interested in running for the legislature. I think what we find is a lack of appetite for the more seasoned legislators to come in and and go into a head to head against San Nicolas uh, when he's been able to bring 2.5 billion dollars worth of federal funding into the island. Yeah. I, I just want to ask the question. I don't know if anyone's really asking it, but is the serious consideration that uh, the congressman is giving a run for Adeloupe, does it have, in your opinion, anything at all to do with this ethics investigation with this latest stock? trading news because you know what people are saying is that oh the ethics investigation is wrapping up and it's so bad that he's gonna have to resign and, and then that's why he's gonna uh, make a bid for Adelope. okay so 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 i'll go by parts and and this is not my party hat but my federal consultant hat okay right uh first of all every other day almost for a year i think the democratic party People that are close to the governor keep saying he's going to be thrown out. They're kicking him out of Congress. Uh, they're not kicking him out of Congress. First of all, the investigation on the on the stock is is not an investigation by Congress. It's an investigation by an independent group that just brought up that there were seven or nine congressmen uh, that they felt had violated the the reporting statute. If you see from the same report, a number of the members called in and immediately say our trades were below the reporting requirement. So if it doesn't meet that threshold, you don't have to report it. So that's why I didn't report them. Uh, they mentioned four transactions that Congressman St. Nicholas had been involved with. Uh, as, as far as I know, he's not a wealthy man, so I'm not expecting that any of those transactions would have gotten above the threshold for the disclosure. He has not answered 
but even if they were, I can guarantee you in DC, that's basically, uh, oh, here's a fine, don't do it again. Uh, if it were to evolve from going from an independent organization, bringing up the concern to an actual investigation by a federal agency with oversight over it, if and if any of those four transactions were above the threshold. So I see it as a lot more of uh, nothing. Uh, and if that's a hope of uh, he's leaving Congress, I think they need to keep on dreaming. If they're gonna run a candidate against him, they should find one uh, and, and, and run him. But uh, I think that Nicholas' concern is his frustration with granting the federal funds to the island and see them sitting on account and hearing from federal agencies, hey, we're getting close to the point that we're gonna have to pull that money back out. That's a frustration. Well, thanks. So Either way, um, I'm still finding, I'm looking for a Republican candidate that would run for Congress. We, we, we want, we will fill that slot. We'll, we'll have somebody running on the Republican side. Uh, and, uh, and uh, any, it's, it's, any, uh, any former governors interested in that, uh, running for that slot one? Uh, I can neither, uh, uh, confirm or deny. <laughs> oh, juicy. Okay. Um, what about these pictures going around with the Nicholas and Moylan uh, kind of posing together? I know those have generated a little bit of discussion. Yeah, I, I know they do. And, and uh, it's not the first time that there's been uh, comments here in Guam about a bipartisan ticket running, and uh, a Republican a Democrat uh, ticket coming along. And uh, I'm sure that at some point, something like that will happen. Uh, I don't see it this election cycle. Interesting. Okay. What about the... Former Governor Felix Camacho, should we? Are you hearing that we might see him uh, re-entering the political arena? Yeah, I ha I haven't talked to Governor Camacho in the last two months. Uh, my last conversation with him, he was more focused on the mentoring uh, side. He would like to help and support and and help mentor some of the local and federal candidates. Uh, um, I think he's enjoying not having the limelight of the public office on him <laughs> right now. All right. Thank you, Juan. Thanks, Juan. Yeah. So, so, so uh, I, I, I hear no confirmation or denial about uh, two uh, news anchors that are debating about running for Congress or for the local legislature either. Well, and, uh, I don't know. There's only the two news anchors in here, are Sabrina and Jason. You're going to have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Juan. <laughs> Take You're care. Welcome. Have a good day. You too, my friend. <laughs> You're funny. Am I? Yeah. So, Jay, are you running? Apparently, you have no idea what my interests are. <laughs> <laughs> it's I nice. don't have any tattoos, but if I was going to get one, it would be like a circle around my heart. It says, private sector till I die. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a break, uh, and we're coming back with more of the link next. Good morning. We know you're tired of hearing about COVID-19. Some of you are probably wondering whether this is ever going to 